This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Erden Aruch to discuss his upcoming quest to complete a solo crossing of the Pacific Ocean in a rowboat. When and how did your life become centered on these human-powered outdoor adventure quests? quests? Quite simply, why? <clears throat> well, thank you for the opportunity to tell my story. I have been active all my life uh, as an athlete. I was introduced to mountaineering by, with my, by my father at age 11 and uh, uh, always busy with athletics. So uh, when I came across a world map that was hanging on, our, on the wall of our IT lab in Silver Spring, Maryland in 1997, uh, I traced my finger across that. Uh, this was a special map with the Americas on the right, Old World on the left, Pacific in the middle. And uh, I wanted to take that journey to Turkey where I'm from originally. So I gave it a name, Journey Home, and that became a quiet obsession. That's how it all started. That was the germination of it all. Okay. Well, Erden, uh, we understand that you have, as I discussed in the opening, we you have an upcoming quest, which is to complete a solo crossing of the Pacific Ocean in a rowboat. And as I understand it, it's a continuation of your Six Summits project. Can you give our viewers a bit of background on the Six Summits project, its origination, its purpose, and specifically, where are you today in your journey to complete it? Right, the Six Summits Project, which became uh, pretty much the purpose of my life lately. Uh, when I uh, decided that I was going to do a circumnavigation by human power, um, I started reading about such journeys. Uh, one of the books that I read was uh, about Joran Krop, the Swedish adventurer who, who had bicycled from Sweden to Nepal in 1996 to climb Everest solo. And... Uh, Ultimate High was the name of the book. And he came to Seattle for a presentation. I met him and his first two questions to me were, when are you starting, do you have sponsors? Uh, and then when we had the chance to go climbing for the first time in September of 2002, uh, we had an accident, he fell and he died. I was his belayer and that became the turning point for me. On the way back from his funeral in Stockholm, uh, on the plane, I drew the world map on a piece of paper, the proverbial napkin, and uh, marked the highest summits on each continent and sketched uh, a path connecting these, saying that I would reach each one of these by human power as had Yaron, except Antarctica, I would go to the highest summit on each continent. So the first summit to do, so the Six Summits Project was born. The first summit to do was uh, Mount McKinley, I bicycled up there in 2003 and summited in May, married my fiance then in Homer, Alaska, and then bicycled back. She flew home. That was our honeymoon. <laughs> it takes such a partner to get these journeys done. And uh, then during my circumnavigation, which started in 2007, uh, lasted through 2012, I summited Kosciuszko in Australia and Kilimanjaro in Africa. So what remains are uh, Everest, uh, uh, Elbrus, and Aconcagua. On my to-do list is Everest first. For that, I am going to leave from my home in Gig Harbor and launch from shores of California somewhere and row across to mainland Asia, shores of China, and then from there bicycle to Tibet to climb Everest. So that's the next step. Erin, I understand that our friends at Elliott Bay Design Group in Seattle have donated some of their vessel design expertise uh, for your upcoming trip. Can you describe uh, EBDG's contribution? I have a, an existing rowboat right now, which I used on four ocean crossings and during my circumnavigation. Uh, this boat served me well. Uh, during those crossings, uh, helped me set uh, multiple Guinness World Records. And that boat is built out of marine plywood. And given my experience with these ocean rows and my thoughts about how this boat could be improved to be more survivable in hurricane conditions, I decided that I need to build a new rowboat. Therefore, I needed to capture the hull shape 
and the specifications of the existing rowboat accurately so that I can then transfer that and use that as a template perhaps and uh, improve on it. So uh, when I was introduced to Elliott Bay Design Group, they offered to do a 3D scanning of the hull and, uh, and capture that accurately so that I can then build the forms, cross sections, and then uh, go from there. That's, uh, I needed an accurate starting point and they gave me a foot up. So that's, uh, so I'm, I'm grateful for their contribution. And I understand, uh, I'm sure this is a long journey. So when you look at your Pacific Ocean adventure, uh, what is the timeline to complete that? Well, I would need to leave in May to get to the other side uh, in April, uh, get off the water in April, because in Western Pacific, I will be challenged by typhoons. My timeline then is a May departure. Uh, hopefully my boat will be done, complete, uh, the, the build will be complete by the end of March. I'll be able to test everything in April and be ready for a launch in May. If, that, if not this May, it's going to have to be following May because I can't leave earlier due to weather conditions and I can't uh, arrive later than April on the other side uh, because I would be hit by a super typhoon for sure. What is your mission from a fundraising perspective for this specific Pacific Ocean journey? We have a nonprofit called Around and Over and my mission on this crossing will be uh, to raise awareness about plastics in our oceans. I'm an ambassador for the Ocean Recovery Alliance, and uh, we focus on beach cleanups and uh, reducing plastic use in corporations and in installations and facilities like stadiums. Uh, plastics Disclosure Project is one of their uh, offerings. So all these ideas uh, and hope for solution is what I would like to convey during my crossing and in my blogs uh, during the crossing. The, uh, cost that we came up with just to get the boat to the other side and do the logistics of handling it and send, shipping it back. If we were to do just Pacific Crossing was about uh, $230,000. Uh, so uh, that, that needs to be underwritten somehow. Uh, I have uh, plans of uh, doing a documentary about this uh, and possibly a multi-episode television series, TV series. So uh, those will add quite a bit to the production costs. Uh, when we add that, it goes right up to over a million dollars. So. Have, you, have, you actually, have you started building the boat yet or have you found a builder to build the boat? I wanted to have a builder do this professionally then without lack of funds, uh, with lack of funds, uh, I decided that uh, I had to do this myself. So I have been gathering all the materials. Uh, I am going to use a cedar strip uh, build for the hull shape uh, with the accurate forms that uh, Elliot uh, Bay Design Group have has provided to me. Uh, and on the outside, I will then be using Kevlar for impact uh, resistance and on the inside I will use S glass to uh, further reinforce the hull and then build from there. I will build uh, additional safety features to this vessel uh, so that as I suggested it would be more survivable. In all of your time engaged in human powered navigation is there any one time where you simply thought I'm not going to make it? <laughs> well, there were a few, but one that stands out is uh, when I was riding my bicycle, pulling a trailer in Tanzania. It was the monsoon season, and I came up to a road construction, and uh, the newly paved road was blocked with mounds of dirt. They, they wouldn't let anybody on. They had a service road that they uh, ran parallel to this construction, and with the monsoon rain, uh, and trucks passing, buses churning, the mud had turned into slurry. So it looked like uh, chocolate milk that I was pushing myself and my equipment through. And I was in slurry up to my knees and it just became an impossible task. And I thought, this is not gonna work. It's gonna be dark soon. There's thick bush on either side. There's no way to get off this thing and dry up and set up at a tent. It would just be impossible. I was ready to give up and get on a uh, 
passing bus and figure out how I would return to the same spot after the monsoon season then. Uh, but uh, then I came to a little opening, nobody was around. I got on the freshly paved road and completed my ride about 60 kilometers. They said the construction would continue, which was true. I got to the end, other end of this and got to a village and washed up, started over the next day. So the message is don't give up. There's always going to be a break. <laughs> I'm sure also there have been many um, uh, instances, but can you point to one specific or one cumulative experience that you found most gratifying? I th think what stands out most is how enthusiastically I was received whenever I reached a new destination. Uh, when I got to Papua New Guinea, uh, their folklore, their stories are passed by mothers and grandmothers to the children. So they have an oral uh, historic history tradition. And I made it into their local stories now, I'm told, as the man who arrived in a yellow rowboat uh, from across the ocean. So uh, that's whenever I needed help, the right people showed up. And that gave me confidence that I could uh, launch again and uh, project myself to the other coast and uh, carry on with the journey, knowing that I would find the right people. Our readership, our viewership, uh, as I explained, spans the maritime, the offshore energy and the subsea industries. Uh, I'm sure many will be looking for more information. I'm sure some might even want to help. Specifically, where can they go to find out more information about your journey and your causes. Sure, uh, that would be wonderful for people to follow what I'm doing. If they went to humanpoweredjourney.com, that will direct them to our nonprofit around and over. And there are links to uh, my stories, what we have been doing, how to support us. Uh, as a 501c3 nonprofit, it gives uh, corporations a way to contribute uh, readily. And also uh, they can look me up uh, on Instagram and other and LinkedIn and my own website as well as E-R-D-E-N-E-R-U-C is the tag. So erdenerush.com or Instagram erdenerush.